Welcome to Why I Quit, a show that interviews people quitting their 9-to-5 jobs in search of something different. Listen to inspiring conversations where we dive deep into the stories of why people quit their jobs, what were the hardest parts, where are they now, and any advice for people following the same path. I am so excited to introduce John Brickman as this week's guest. Listen as John discusses how law school was always the plan, but last minute he decided to start a business instead. With no experience in the industry, John and a business partner started a bed bug detection company in New York City. They train canines to go into buildings and detect traces of bed bugs within a distance of eight feet away. Get inspired hearing about how they pioneered a new offering and how this led John to keep exploring new entrepreneurial ideas. Thanks for joining us today, John. I'd love to go back. What was your first job out of school? So my, my situation is a little unique, I have to say, because Originally, I was at St. John's University, and I graduated with a political science degree, but I was going to go to law school. That was the goal. Last minute, I was you know, presented with an opportunity to start my own business, so I did. I actually, believe it or not, have never actually had a corporate job. <laughs> I went straight out of school. Literally, I hit the ground running. It was go to law school, spend a quarter million dollars. You know, have the possibility of maybe getting a job in New York City, you know, making 40, 50K a year, starting out, entry-level paralegal, paying out, you know, basically for like a lawyer, you're getting like an experienced paralegal pay. My brother-in-law, he's an analyst at Barclays. He's like, hey, man, well, I have a lot of friends that are lawyers. You might want to rethink that. The market's a little flooded right now, you know? So I was like, okay, let me just see. Let me just see what's out there. And... I ended up starting a bed bug detection company. You know, it's completely random. I partnered up with a friend of mine, Scott. He's an older guy. He knew the industry. I knew the techie side of things, you know, how to build a website, marketing, all that stuff. Just from growing up, man, in the late 90s, you know, MySpace, you know, coding profiles online, just the basics. I've never taken a marketing, like, course on, on a college level comfortable enough <laughs> with the basics that I knew to hit the ground running. I teamed up with Scott. We started a company, NYC Bedbug Inspections. It's a independent canine inspection company here in the city. We have dogs that are trained to detect bedbugs. We have contracts with hotels, hospitals, department stores. Now, this was a completely brand new business when we started it. There was nothing there. Literally, it was just an idea. And then it was like, all right, let's see if we can build a website. Let's get a Google page. The calls started coming in. Little do you know, the first year was tough. Like every business, everyone says it. The first year is always the hardest year. Mostly we spent a lot of our own money just to keep the operation running. But I have to say, a little bit of marketing experience that I had paid off. <laughs> you know, we were doing like Facebook ads and like Google AdWords and we had Google campaigns and all that stuff, pay-per-click, you know, but we also had organic SEO going on. We were like building up the website, we post blogs, we repost our blogs from our website to Facebook. And I mean, the traction grew, man. The traction grew and little do you know, the fall, the phone calls started rolling in. We stay busy. You know, now our company does a few thousand dollars a day. I consider myself an entrepreneur. You have to be careful, you know, you don't want to get stuck in one industry. I don't want to be a, an exterminator or a pest control guy. I'm, I'm, I hide behind the computer. I like the idea of you know, starting something, dedicating myself to it, maybe putting a couple of years into it, and then figuring out how I can <laughs> take a step back you know, and maybe getting somebody to manage the business for me. And that's literally where I'm at right now. Now it's a machine. I, I, I want to let the machine run on its own. The SEO is there. The, the phone calls are there. The business is there. The credibility is there. We're getting featured on the New York Post. We're getting featured on New York Magazine. It's done. You know, the hard work is done. I just wanted to go go back a little bit. So when you're thinking about, you know, law school versus this, you know, where where's your where's your head at? Was that a hard decision for you to accept not going to law school? Were you originally 100% set on that? Because like I did years of schooling leading up to this, you know, I had an, a minor in paralegal studies, a bachelor's in political science, literally all gearing up to that that moment of going to law school. But I am not a stranger to advice. I keep my ears open. I, I listen to what's out there. Other people in the industry, they're telling me, hey, you know, maybe now's not the best time to get into it. You know, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure that if I would have gone to law school, I would have been happy. 
I would have had to put a lot more work in. I would have been a corporate slave. I would have probably been working 15 hours a day and I would have had to work a nine to five, not even a nine to five, maybe like a seven to eight, who knows, you know, depending on where you're at. I mean, every firm is different, right? But it would have definitely been um, a different lifestyle. So did you have any experience before in the, the bed bug industry or, you know, what is the connection? I've never been in the pest control industry at all. Okay, so this is what we're, how it all started. I was at a party one day. I was hanging out with, uh, I met this guy, Scott, I met him randomly in the city and we started hanging out. He was like, Hey, you know, like he had this idea and I was like, Hey, that's actually a pretty good idea, but he didn't know how to execute it. Keep in mind, we didn't create the bed bug detection industry with the canines. There's a kind of company that started doing that first. It's a multi-million dollar company that built environmental. They've been around a couple of years before we came out, but we just tried to do it a little bit better. They're an extermination company and there's a lot more certifications, licensing that goes into the whole extermination industry. So we weren't really trying to dip our hands into all that liability right off the bat. So we said, hey, let's just do inspections only with the dogs. That way we're not dealing with the chemicals, just strictly inspections. So that's something new to New York City. Like there was no, at that point in time, there was not just an independent bed bug inspection company. If you wanted a bed bug inspection and you wanted one, it was directly affiliated with an extermination company. And so there's also a conflict of interest there. We said, hey, let's do something that mm -hmm. doesn't exist yet. I think you have bed bug. It was a call, honest results. We'll send somebody in with a canine. They'll do a thorough visual with a flashlight. If there's anything there, they're going to tell you right away. And you can trust us because we're not exterminators. We're not trying to sell you an extermination service. You know what I mean? We're not going to go in there and drop bed bugs around. So I think that was honestly like a selling point to a lot of people in the city. I built a website, HTML5. I did it on Squarespace wasn't rocket science. It's literally just drag and drop. So a lot of people are intimidated. They're, you know, they think, Hey, you know, I have to hire a company for my website, like for my marketing, you know, like this and that, like, yeah, technically you can, or you can do it yourself. If you do a little bit of research on, you could figure it out. We ended up hiring a marketing company at the very beginning because I knew enough just to get us to the front door, but I, I needed some guidance as well. I think we were paying them a thousand dollars a month, writing blogs off the back end of our website, sending them to Facebook, posting them. Every time you'd click on the blog, the link on Facebook, it would redirect you back to our website. So we would get all that organic traffic back to our site. And I mean, we would literally get like thousands of clicks, you know what I mean? Every campaign we ran. So you have to keep in mind all that traffic was generating right back to our website which overall built up our organic SEO. So it was like pushing us to the top of the search engines, you know, which ultimately generates more business. I was watching what this company was doing on the back end because I built the website. I could see what I had done and I could see what they were doing different, you know? So I basically just like learned what they were doing without ever talking to them. I just went online and was like, I just looked on Squarespace on the back end. I was like, okay, I can see what's going on here. So we stopped paying them. I took over. Basically, I continued doing exactly what they were doing, except not having to pay them $1,000 a month. One less cost got my business partner. It was new for him too, but he was the one with the initial idea. That's how we ended up in the bed bug world. So we went 50-50 partners. We got two dogs, hired a couple employees. Did you train those dogs yourself or were they already trained so when you got them? The first two dogs that we had, we bought fully trained. There was a trainer in New Jersey. He does all the bomb and drug dogs for the New Jersey State Police. He also trains bed bug detection dogs. So we purchased these dogs from this trainer. Uh, they were about 15 grand each. And then you have to like actually wow. certify them and like maintain the training. So there's, there is a good chunk of money involved at the beginning. The guy that we worked with, Joe, the trainer, he's what's called a master trainer. A lot of people in the canine world, they don't want to give you the secret sauce because then you don't need them anymore. But Joe Nick, he is actually what's called, like I said, a master trainer. So he is like very like open about the blueprint. He'll teach you. He goes to all the local police departments and teaches their main canine instructors new techniques. We purchased the dogs from him and then, you know, just dealing with him with the training, you know, and the maintenance of the canine, you know, the bed bug detection training. We learned how to train our own dogs. So now I've we've trained two new dogs on our own. The dogs are great. They're extremely accurate. We can have them, they're all nationally certified. Honestly, it's good as it gets in the sin detection world. 
the businesses there. We do hotels, hospitals, department stores. We do LaGuardia, JFK Airport. It wouldn't be right of me to tell you exactly all the places that we do because we do find bed bugs there all the time. <laughs> Before this, you know, you decide not to go to law school, but it does sound like there's a pretty big investment in the beginning. You're also learning on the fly as you go. It seems like there's a lot of risk to this. Did you feel that risk at the time? Right before I got into the bed bug industry, I was actually dabbling into the Airbnb rental business. In New York City, I had several properties that I, was, I wasn't buying the properties. I was leasing them out. And then I was putting them on Airbnb and I was renting them out for 30 days at a time. So everything was completely legal. But I had about five properties in the city in Manhattan that I had. I, was, I had money coming in. I wasn't stressing about like, where am I going to get my next penny? Or like, this needs to work out or else how am I going to get my next meal? You know, I, was, I was getting four times what I was paying for the rent. There was definitely a profit there. The first year, I maintained the Airbnb business. And then after the first year, I kind of just gave it to my sister and she kind of just took over everything because I didn't have time. The bed bug industry take, started taking off so much that I couldn't handle it. So no, to answer your question, I wasn't necessarily stressed out at the beginning because I had a kind of a little bit of a buffer. But again, the buffer was in itself another entrepreneurial venture. So, so it seems like you're dabbling in a lot of different ventures at this time. Did, did you growing up always think you were going to be in the entrepreneurial space or when, when did that start for you? Not really. Well, this is the thing. I was born and raised in Florida. I, I moved to New York City when I was 18. I went straight to college. I mean, like I never had a real job. Like my first and only job that I really ever had was I was working in a stock room at DSW. I can't even remember how much I was getting paid, maybe like $10 an hour, like, you know, it was part time. It's either you like become a corporate slave or you try to start something on your own. My dad was an entrepreneur. He went to Columbia and he was one of like the first imports, importers to like for pure one imports. I guess there's a little bit of you know, entrepreneur in the blood, but, um, but no, me myself never previously had any kind of side business, side hustle. It was just like fresh out of college, law school or not. That's basically what it came down to. So, and I knew that right then and there, if I decided to go to law school, I mean, it was all in. I would have to like stay in there, maintain, commit myself to the school for the next three years. And after that, I mean, I have a quarter million dollars of debt. So now I have to go get a job and work my ass off. <laughs> and like, and now I'm like, going to be like saying yes, sir, no, sir, you know, to like all these people in the work environment. And like, don't get me wrong. I have no problem with authority. I can definitely, I will, I work well in structured environments. I could have definitely, I, I think, excelled in a corporate environment. I just was given the opportunity to not go into the corporate world. And I said, why not? <laughs> you know, I mean, like I have, I was young. I had time on my side. I was like literally fresh out of school. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I started the business with my partner back in 2014. I was like 23 at the time. Time was on my side. Maybe if I was like 45, 50. Maybe it would be a little more intimidating to quit something and just jump into something with all the responsibilities. Maybe if I would have had a kid, a wife, a mortgage, all these financial obligations, that wasn't my situation. So I said, you know what, why not? As New York City bed bug inspections is growing, was there, was there a specific moment when you knew that this business was going to take off or you were, you know, you knew that you had the moment where you're like, wow, this business is onto something. We were filling a void. It was a service that we were providing that didn't exist. And so, yes, there was a, a you know, a moment where I was started realizing, hey, this is actually a pretty decent business because like people need us, <laughs> you know, like they actually need us in an office setting. You know, let's just say, for example, you are an office manager. You, you manage 300 employees. One of your employees comes to you and says, hey, I think I might have bed bugs. I'm not sure I'm getting bites or I found a bed bug next to my desk because that guy raised an issue. Now there's liability involved. So if you don't do anything, then you're liable, right? So now you have to hire an inspection company to come in, right? Because you want to pinpoint the issue and you want to exterminate it right away just so it doesn't become an ongoing issue. So we became like a insurance policy for a lot of places. If they would have ignored the employee raising the alarm about bed bugs and the bed bugs would have been rampant in the office and multiple employees would have taken the bed bugs home with them. The office would have been responsible for exterminating all of their apartments. Honestly, it limits your liability and saves you money in the future because you can say, hey, look, we were inspected on this day. The dog came in. We were bed bug free. It was negative. There was no alerts. 
So bam, they did what they had to do to not be negligent. And, and the same thing works in the hotel industries. You wake up, you think you have bites, you're not really sure. You call the front desk. What's the front desk going to do? Send somebody in with a flashlight? Yeah, they could. Or they could send a dog in that's nationally certified to train to pick up bed bugs within eight feet, can smell as little as one bed bug or egg. It's way more accurate. They can search the room in two minutes versus a guy with a flashlight's going to be in there for what, two hours and still not going to be as thorough as a dog sniffing around. It was definitely an industry where people, where I felt people needed us. That makes a lot of sense. And so I know, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, unhappy in their jobs and they're thinking about wanting to start their own business. But I think a lot of times what doesn't get talked about, which you referenced a little bit earlier about how hard the first year was, what were some of the hardest parts as you were getting started and starting to grow the business? Well, the hardest part was, I would say the first year was, believe it or not, getting payment. Because the thing is that the jobs did start rolling in, but there's a struggle. And that's where like the whole like running the business aspect of things, you know, being your own business owner kind of like comes into play. Because there's things that you, tricks of the trade that people don't necessarily tell you that you just have to learn on your own. We'd send out bills and, the, and then the checks wouldn't come in for like months. I mean, there was one hospital that we were doing inspections for. They didn't send out invoices, sorry, checks for at least six months. And keep in mind, like, we're actually spending a lot of operational costs because we were inspecting every Friday. So, like, if we didn't have a, a buffer, we would have probably not survived. Good thing that we had other things going on. Money-wise, we weren't struggling. Scott had his own thing going on. He, you know, he had another business that he was doing. And like I said, I had Airbnb. So, like, we both had our own little buffers and this was kind of like a side project for us so we didn't go like 100 all in you know at the very beginning it was kind of just he took some of his time and i took some of my time and kind of grew it as we went on but yes the first year i would say it would have been tough if we didn't necessarily have other buffers going on so i would honestly tell a lot of people if you have a nine to five maybe and, and you're thinking about starting something on your own maybe start it as a as a project first maybe a weekend project or you know when you get off work dedicate your free time to this project because you definitely aren't going to generate money right away it's just a lot of costs so unless you have savings you're going to be in the hole if you jump all in and, and you're not 100 percent versed in the you know well versed in the business world then you might fall or you might struggle or you might get really stressed out How am i going to pay my bills How am i going to do this and then you start panicking and like you start getting desperate so if you already have a job and you have a well-paying job even if it's not a well-paying job if you have just a random job you know if you have money coming in i would say maintain that and that way you're not completely reliant just specifically on that and i think that will take a lot of stress off of new business owners thank you for listening it really means a lot to us we want to hear from you as we keep going. Please reach out on whyequip.co with any feedback or if you have any guests that you think would be a good fit. Subscribe on whyequip.substack.com to get an update every Wednesday with the newest guests. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube to get notified with the latest episodes. Also, a special thanks to Chris Dole for the music. Check out his newest album, Here's to You. Thank you, and we will be back next week.